The Virgin of the Cosmos Part 4 With them began the faith of treaties, and the introduction into human life of the religious duty of oaths. They taught the rites of sepulture towards those who cease to live, they interrogated the horrors of death, they showed that the spirit from without delights to return into the human body, and that if the way of entry be shut against it, it brings about a failure of life. Instructed by Hermes, they engraved upon hidden tables that the air is filled with genii. Instructed by Hermes in the secret laws of the divine, they alone were the teachers and legislators of mankind, initiating them in the arts, the sciences, and the benefits of civilized life. Instructed by Hermes concerning the sympathetic affinities which the Creator has established between heaven and earth, they instituted religious representations and sacred mysteries. And, considering the corruptible nature of all bodies, they ordained prophetic initiation, so that the prophet who lifts his hands to the gods should be instructed in all things, and that thereby philosophy and magic might provide nourishment for the soul, and medicine might heal the sufferings of the flesh. Having performed all these things, O oh my son, and seeing the world arrived at its fullness, Osiris and I were recalled by the inhabitants of heaven, but we could not return there without having first praised the Lord, so that the celestial vision might fill the expanse, and that the way of a happy ascension might open before us, since the divine delights in hymns. O oh my mother, said Horus, teach me this hymn that I also may be instructed in it. Pay attention, my son, answered Isis. O oh my illustrious son, if you will know anything further, ask it of me. And Horus said, Revered mother, I would like to know how royal souls are born. And Isis answered, Here, my son Horus lies the distinctive character of royal souls. There are in the universe, four regions, governed by a fixed and immutable law, heaven, the ether, the air, and the most holy earth. Above, in heaven, dwell the gods, ruled as are all the rest, by the maker of the universe, in the ether are the stars, governed by the great fire, the sun, in the air are the souls of the genii, governed by the moon, upon earth are men and other animals governed by the soul who, for the time, is their king. For the gods themselves engender those who shall be kings befitting the terrestrial race. Princes are the issue of kings, and he who is most kingly, is a greater king than the rest. The sun, nearer to God than is the moon, is greater and stronger than she, and to him she is subject as much by rank as by power. The king is the last of the gods and the first of men. So long as he sojourns upon earth, his divinity is concealed but he possesses something which distinguishes him from other men and approximates him to God. The soul in him comes from a loftier region than that from which descend the souls of common men. Souls destined to reign upon the earth descends there for two causes. There are those who in former lives have lived blameless, and who merit apotheosis for such as these royalty is a preparation for the divine state. Again, there are holy souls who, for some slight infringement of the interior and divine law, receive in royalty a penance whereby the suffering and shame of incarnation are mitigated. The condition of these in taking a body resembles not that of others, 
they are as blessed as when they were free. As to the various characters of these kings, the variety is not in the souls, for all are royal, but it is due to the nature of the angels and genii who assist them. For souls destined to such offices are not without ministers and escort. Heavenly justice, even while exiling them from the abodes of the blessed, treats them as their nature befits. When, then, O oh my son Horus, the ministering angels and genii appointed are warlike, the soul in their charge takes that character, forgetting its own, or rather laying it aside until some future change of condition. If the guardian angels are of a gentle order, then the soul follows its path in peace, if they are friends of judgment, the soul loves to judge, if they are musicians, then the soul sings, if they love truth, the soul is that of a philosopher. Thus the souls necessarily follow the teaching of their guardians, falling into human bodies they forego their proper estate, and while exiled from it they approximate to those intelligences by whom they have been embodied. Your explanation is complete, my mother, said Horus, but you have not yet informed me in what manner noble souls are born. There are upon earth, O oh my son, different offices. So also is it among souls, they occupy different stations, and that soul which issues from a more exalted sphere is nobler than the rest even as he who is free among men, is nobler than the slave. Exalted and royal souls are necessarily the masters of men. How are souls born male or female? Souls, my son Horus, are all equal in nature, since they come from one region wherein the Creator has formed them. There are not among them either males or females, this distinction exists only between bodies, and not between incorporeal beings. But some are more energetic, some are gentler, and this belongs to the air in which all things are formed. For an airy body envelops the soul, in it are the elements of earth, water, air, and fire. Among females this combination contains more of cold and of moisture than of dryness and heat, and the soul which is enfolded therein is watery and disposed to softness. The contrary happens among males, their envelope contains more of dryness and of heat, less of cold and of moisture, hence in bodies so formed the souls manifest greater vivacity and energy. And how, O oh my mother, are born the souls of the wise? And Isis answered, The organ of vision is enveloped in tunics. When these tunics are thick and dense, the sight is dull, when they are fine and subtle, the sight is penetrating. Even so is it with the soul, she likewise has her coverings incorporeal as herself. These coverings are the interior airs, when they are subtle, clear, and transparent, then the soul is perspicuous, when, on the contrary, they are dense, thick, and turgid, then she cannot see far, and discerns only, as though in cloudy weather, that which lies immediately before her steps. And Horus said, For what reason, my mother, are the minds of men who are not of our holy country less open than the minds of those who belong to it? And Isis replied, The earth is set in the midst of the universe like a man lying on his back and gazing into heaven, and the various regions of earth correspond to the different members of the man. 
the earth turns her gaze towards heaven as towards her father, following in her changes the changes of the skies. Her head lies to the south, her right shoulder to the east, her left is turned towards the Libyan wind, her feet are under the constellation of the bear, the right beneath the tail, and the left beneath the head of the bear, her loins are under the regions of heaven nearest to the bear, the midst of her body is beneath the center of heaven. Behold as a proof of these things, how they who dwell in the south have a beautiful countenance and plentiful hair, while the orientals have hands hardy in conflict and ready with the bow, for they are right-handed, the westerns are strong and fight with the left hand, attributing to the left side the functions which belong in others to the right, those who dwell beneath the bear are distinguished by the attributes of their feet, and by the beauty of their legs, those who inhabit beyond the bear in the climate of Italy and of Greece are remarkable for the beauty of their loins, and hence their tendency to prefer males. This part of the body also, being whiter than the rest, produces men of a whiter hue. The hallowed region of our ancestors is in the midst of the earth, and since the midst of the human body is the seat of the heart, and the heart of the soul, this is why, my son, the men of this land, beside the qualities which all men possess in common, have also a loftier intelligence and wisdom, because the heart of the earth brings them forth and nourishes them. Moreover, my son, the south is the storehouse of the clouds, it is there they assemble, and thence, it is said, flows our river, when the cold becomes abundant. Now, where the clouds descend, the air grows thick and is filled with vapors which spread themselves as a veil not only over the sight, but over the intelligence. The east, my son Horus, is continually disturbed and glowing under the sunrise, as is the west under the sunset, therefore, they who dwell in these regions can hardly preserve a clear perception. The north, by means of its icy temperature, thickens the mind even as it does the body. This ends the Virgin of the Cosmos Part 4.